everybody, what's going on? Rob Cicerino back here with coverage of the premiere of House of Villains here on the Hit or Quit podcast, the only podcast feed where we talk about the weirdest reality TV shows around. And here I am back with my co-host here of the Hit or Quit feed. It's never a villain in my eyes. It's Jenny Autumn. Jenny, how are you? All right, I'm so good. I'm so I'm really, really excited about this. Like, not to give everything away too early, but I'm so pumped to talk about this show. Um, you do not have to Google me to be here. Please do not Google me. Mm -hmm. uh, I do we not encourage it. being Googled. <laughs> yes, but I am okay. very pumped. Okay, and now also with us to talk some House of Villains, a man who once upon a time said, "Please." Please, can I talk about House of Villains? I never get to have anything nice. <laughs> it's your, your wish is granted. It's Chappelle. Chappelle, how are you? Rob, I'm great, but I don't like you uh, misrepresenting oh, my statement. Well, yeah. Okay. okay. Uh -oh. what you say? I'm think, already. <laughs> Rob, you need to cover House of Villains. I never oh. get to have anything nice because I wanted to hear you talk about it. But now that I've watched the show... I think I'm here to give you the boot. I think that I need to be talking about this show mm -hmm. with Jenny, uh, and maybe it shouldn't be you. So I was wrong. I I think I might be the villain of this podcast. Okay. Oh well, my we'll goodness. See. Let's Coming get into uh, talking about. Uh, people might be saying, "What is this?" Okay, there's a new show on E that has brought together ten reality TV villains and brought them together to live in a house, hosted by the great Joel McHale. Of uh, Carson of, Daly, uh, yes, uh, aka Carson <laughs> Daly, aka Nick Lachey, and yes. so he is here to walk us through a show that I have to be honest, I still don't really understand what the rules are, but there are a bunch of villains, and presumably things will happen. And we're here to talk about episode number one. The show premiered on uh, like E Bravo, Sci Fi, NBC.com. It was everywhere last I think night. It's on C it might be on CTV in Canada, I think. I think. Don't quote mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And so we'll be talking about what happened and uh, having some fun here talking live tonight about House of Villains. Jenny, what was your reaction? Did you like it? I loved it. I loved it. Okay, Rob, remember when we had Stars on Mars? Wasn't that yep. long ago? And I was like, this is better than Celebrity Big Brother. Blah, blah, blah. Um, this is what I actually want because it feels like like these are these are reality TV legends, right? So they're like celebrities of reality right. TV. So they're already experienced in making good television, but but you take it to another level because these are all people that have been established as villains of their shows. And so it's every single person is, we should expect, going to be able to bring good television because they have already been proven to, to do this. So you're getting like a game that's kind of Big Brother Survivor-esque. Um, but you're doing it with all people that are expected to bring drama, backstab and lie. Like it's, it's a wonderful concept. And I had a really, really good time with this premiere and I like, I, it's mess. It's mess. It's really, really good. I, yeah. that's, that's what I'm saying. Well, I and I feel like time. that it, it's a great cast. It's a fun concept, but I feel like that more than anything, I feel like that the tone is perfect in terms of, uh, what the yes. show is. It's not taking itself seriously. It's, okay. it's having fun. It's breaking the fourth wall. It mm -hmm. knows who this is a show for. So I, I really love the execution of house of villains so far. What about for you, Chappelle? For me, this is everything. This is life. This is why I do what I do. I watch TV because I love characters and villains are characters. Heroes don't always have to be characters. They just have to win or, you know, be seen in a good light. But a villain has to do something. And whatever you have done to get you on this show is why I'm a fan of you. I think almost all of these villains I am familiar with uh, from watching hours and hours of them on television. And so when you tell me this is the cast, oh, I'm here front row center because some of these people are so villainous that you couldn't even capture 
how bad they are in the 30 minutes or hour long show or whatever we had this episode. Yeah. Uh, so for me, Rob, I couldn't ask for anything more. I'm I'm ready for House of Villains too. I need another yeah. cast of villains already because we got to keep this going. You don't even want to see how this season plays out. You need a whole new cast. We just want it renewed already. Yeah, like. we need it renewed. Uh, this is like it's like if they didn't eliminate anybody, I'd still be fine. Yeah, because because I just want to well, see how people yet. talk to each other. <laughs> okay. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah we need live feeds. Is what we need. We're actually. gonna talk yes. through this. Uh, that if you're worried about spoilers, uh, the good news is nobody got eliminated at the end of this episode. So Ding. you're welcome to oh, yeah. stick yeah. around for the whole show mm -hmm. and hear us talk about it. We'll get into the whole cast, how the show works, and what we think is going to happen. I am wondering. Is it possible that we don't have eliminations on this show? Is it possible that people will stay around in some sort of like, okay, oh. you're out of the game, but stay in the house? Like a jury? Like a I don't know. I just jury. like when they did the super tease at the end, I was trying to see saw from the people that yeah. we saw lots of everybody. And I kind of felt like that. I, I thought I saw all three people who were the nominees in the super tease, like doing more stuff. So mm -hmm. I kind of wonder if maybe like, hey, why why would we get rid of our villains? They're there to make good TV. Maybe, all right, you're out of the game, but maybe you either have some way to get back in or mm. maybe you will be the part of the jury even though you're out of like the actual competition. Like Edge of Extinction yeah. in either the Either Edge house. of Extinction or <laughs> like, hey, we're paying you for the, show, the whole show. So just stay yeah. in the house and be on the jury. Because I do think that the part of the magic of, you know, and it's only 10 people, um, is having all of these huge characters who are at times like, you know, very in your face, have as many of them together so that you have the increased chances of conflict. Um, so if people are actually leaving next week, like we see, we see this in Big Brother, that as it gets whittled down, like, gets kind of snoozy at the end when there's only a few people and you're just kind of waiting for the challenges to play out. Um, and even though I think that you have such amazing characters like these people, uh, even with a few, it'll still be good, mm -hmm. but you're not going to get the maximized amount of chaos that you want from the show. If you're going down one less person every week, unless they have a way of ensuring that it's like, you're getting rid of the person that's doing the least in terms of television. Like unless yeah. the producers like ultimately are deciding who leaves are like, eh, you're not actually that exciting. You got to go. Yeah. Okay. Chappelle, did they miss the mark on any uh, particular villain from reality TV that you feel like should have been there? Who's not? I think that you can't have everybody. There are, uh, you know, reality TV is just littered with villains. There is if a I gave you one more person, who would it be? <laughs> just one. See, that's the problem. I think that there's so many options out there that you could go ahead and cast a whole nother cast. I don't know if I could pick one villain because I don't know like which realm isn't being uh isn't being like handled enough. Like maybe like if you want to add like a drag queen, maybe do like a Roxy Andrews, or maybe if you want to add like a Project Runway person, you pick Santino Rice. You know, there's a villain for mm -hmm. every type of show, and so uh, I don't, I don't think it's easy enough to be like this one particular villain, Jocelyn yeah. Hernandez from Love and Hip Hop. There, you know, you know, I, someone in the chat says Snooky. I look, Snooky's not a villain in my life, but you know, mm -hmm. there are there are villains on every show. I think, and for yeah. me, this this is just the beginning of what could be a beautiful friendship between me and yes. the show and a franchise. Uh, because it looks like they're, they're going to be bringing in other people, other reality yeah. TV villains. Uh, some of my old podcast co-hosts <laughs> even uh, are going to show mm -hmm. up. So it looks like that there's going to be a lot of fun along the way. Let's talk through this cast and then uh, get into a little bit more of everything. And we're live. We can take your questions here as well. Yeah. And so we said we're going to cover the premiere of House of Villains. I don't know how much more coverage uh, we're going to be able to do. I, I really, you know, like this podcast is like a little bit of a democracy. Uh, we tend to do if the if the audience is looking for it, uh, we'll do more. But really, we have. Survivor, Big Brother, The Amazing Race, uh, all uh, going on. Uh, Jenny and I are covering Buddy Games. We've got all every reality show in the world back. I just don't know if we have the bandwidth to cover all of House of Villains. However, <laughs> right. <laughs> however, <laughs> if the, if the people are as excited about this show after the first seventy five minutes, yes, it was seventy five minutes. Uh, 
it's confusing to me. Um, if they're as excited about it as I am, then please let us know. They, I, because I, I felt like I, I was excited for this, but it was even better than, yeah. than what I, what I was hoping. I, yeah. yeah. Mm, okay, look. we'll see. Let's look, let, let, Rob, let's yes, Rob. I know you have limited bandwidth, but famously, <laughs> I don't sleep. So mm -hmm. if I, if, I uh, look, I've never seen this maybe, man sleep. It's maybe true. this ain't for you. Maybe this is not <laughs> the maybe maybe it's hit it or quit it. And you gotta quit it, and maybe I come in and hit it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we change we change positions on that one. You know, maybe maybe this is mine to hit, not yours. Oh! So I'm just saying, if the people if the people want it, Rob, we gotta let Jenny cook. And if you don't, if you're not gonna do it, I got you. Okay. All right. Said, I just want to see, see if there's enough interest <laughs> here. Sous chefs. Yeah, that's exactly what I was saying, Jimmy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let us so know. Let us, let know. us, know, let us how know how you feel. All right. Because, let's, yeah. let's talk about uh, this cast of characters. And so they uh, come in one at a time. Let's, let's go in order of arrival here as uh, we talk it through. Okay. And so uh, let's uh, talk about, okay, our uh, first person to arrive here was... Uh, Johnny Fairplay shows up. Your boy. That is your yeah. friend. Hey, that's uh, <laughs> so, uh, that is a person that I have known for uh, 20 years now. Mm -hmm. Is it weird to watch him on reality TV again in 2023? Like, was this like kind of a weird experience for you, Rob? Um, I wouldn't say it or was you just super. Like, it wasn't yeah. super weird, uh, but you know the good thing about for Johnny Fairplay is that you know uh, he's held up pretty well. You know, mm -hmm. not a huge difference from 2003 Fairplay to 2023 uh, Fairplay. It's been a minute since he's had an opportunity like this, so I'm mm -hmm. happy for him. And uh, you know, I think that this is uh, you know big for him. And he feels he walks in first. And uh, I loved this moment where um, uh, I was like, we lost Chappelle. No, um, I'm trying to find I'm trying to find a good like, uh, trying to boot me out of here. You see yeah, he's like, he's like, I'm taking your podcast. And Rob's like, not today. <laughs> 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 but I loved this moment where where Johnny walks in. Um, one, we get like the restarting of like a lot of the dropping of the fourth wall, like you said, Rob, um, him like redoing his walk in. And um, he's talking about like the first one in like he feels like it's such a compliment to be like the first one in the house yeah it that means he's number one and i loved the shot the scene and the producer talking to them being like okay is it sure like you like you sure about I that feel like being being first in i mean number one yeah oh i think you need to hear about the uh curse on big brother where being the first person in so is not always a good thing i think though that he was a good person to start with because that i think that he was going to be the person who was going to know who everybody else was that you it wasn't like that you were going to bring somebody in that he was gonna say who what is that what what, what show were you from uh like mm -hmm. he was gonna be like oh my god it's this person oh my god it's this person and so i think that he was like a uh a good person in that but i i would say that the person that is the biggest person is the last person that's really yeah. how it goes they did bookends like yeah. they did that they right did. yeah they did and yeah johnny fairplay comes in in, in the in the rob Cincinnati spot he's the super fan he he was the original reality tv villain like amarosa as we will get to later on but you know like he never lost it you know he he kept track of television and the, the spicy characters he probably is leading the group chat of all the villains you know and so he's the perfect one like you said rob um but johnny fairplay became a villain in a time where you didn't have to be that problematic you know reality tv was so new that you could be you know like a jerry manthe and just oh i I, I don't like Keith. And people are like, boo, we hate you. Stop hitting on, on Kobe. Johnny Fairplay lied about his grandma. He was a scumbag on Survivor. But he wasn't awful, you know, on television. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I think that's the kind of villains that they're trying to hit. You know, ones that are, um, you know, somebody who they did some stuff on TV that they're probably not awful, can cancelable, where nobody will watch the show. And I think he's a good first, you know, lead off batter for that. Yeah. And okay. also he, I think that he embraces that, um, like that persona and that title, which I think is very important for the, I, I, this is what I'm worried about with some of these people do 
not lean away from being a villain. Mm -hmm. We did not cast you on this show called House of Villains for you to be like, actually, I used to be a villain, but like, here's a nice story about how I'm like, no, come and be a mess. That's what we came here for. But yet somebody in this House of Villains, like there will be somebody who is like the hero. Somebody's going to get the good at it. Like somebody Mm -hmm. will be the villain of this show. So I think you could take all of the villains. It's an interesting experiment because every other reality show in history has you know uh like okay we're gonna cast the show this way and then people are going to get categorized into these things everybody is trying to come in here and be the villain of this show but inevitably there will be a villain and there will be a hero of the villains and all these people have had the opportunity to be edited as a hero and the producer said what are you talking about you're a villain so they've already been on television now they have a different ta- uh, task of being like how do i make you likable and rootable <laughs> because a lot of these people have been rooted against since the day they set foot on a television set i'm i'm excited and also and also because they're not all from like the same types of shows um they are villains for different reasons like you know they obviously there are going to be some common threads but it's not like a one size fits all which i think makes it interesting so people are going to gravitate to different kinds of villains which i think makes it like kind of fun because you are still like you said rob like some of these people are probably going to end up being like a little heroic like you're going to be like the least villainous of the villains but we're going to see people kind of move into their roles here okay the second person to show up ends up being tiffany new york Pollard shows up here. Somebody who is perennially asked for as a Celebrity Big Brother (laughs) contestant. That's how you know Celebrity Big Brother is back when you start to hear rumors that New York Mm -hmm. is going to be there. She is here uh, in the House of Villains house. And she walks in. She says, original HBIC is here. Yes. And Will Will in the chat says, queen, mother, (laughs) icon, legend. All the things. (laughs) All the things. Beyonce, you know, like this is New York, y'all. This is, it's, how do you beat New York? That's what I'm saying. Like when you talk about casting misses, I think they got so many right that even the ones that you could kind of quibble with, they, they, they're they fine because you, you bring in a New York, you don't have this season of television without a New York. You know, people would be like, throw it in the trash. Where is she at? And so I'm happy that she's here. And uh, she seems like uh, she's going to be fun TV in this first episode. Okay. Is New York a villain? Yeah. What does she do, Chappelle? Because I'm not super familiar with uh, her work. I I know who she is and I know of her. But what does she do that is uh, villainous? Well, New York didn't get the best edit on the flavor of love. The first season that she was on, people were not rooting for her. They were rooting for probably a bunch of other people before her because she's a little brash. You know, she says what's on her mind. Uh, She showed up for Flavor Flav and said that she was going to marry him and there was nothing anybody else could do about it. And she was going to talk about them and do whatever she needed to do to get to the end. And she did, but she didn't win. So they brought her back for a second season. And her second season, she came back almost like in a coaching role, you know, to help the other women get a chance to get at Flavor Flav. Eventually, she comes into the house, much to the other women's dismay. And then by the finale, after losing a second time, she uh, was uh, feeling herself, and they were not. And so she goes to the, uh, the little after show thing. They do the reunion. And... She had been talking so much trash in the confessional, Rob. She talked about Delicious's mom's hair. It was plastic. She said, give it up, Delicious. You look like a man. Uh, she, th- she told people she uh, boxed boots into a corner. So by the time they get to this uh, reunion show, all the women from the cast are throwing shoes and chasing after her, trying to beat her ass on stage. New York is definitely a villain in reality TV history, and she's a great one. Okay. Now, all are right. we going to get this, like, because, like, are, are we going to get this... We throw on shoes with Omarosa because I'm telling you in the preview, <laughs> like we are getting Tiffany versus Omarosa and like s- snap, like strap in your boots. Like I'm freaking ready. I cannot wait. I'm sorry. This is a- it's going to be iconic. Will there be shoes thrown? I don't know. Whew. I hope so. Okay. All right. <laughs> she was pretty tame for episode one. She came out the well, gate she- talking about alliances too. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. And she seems to um like take corinne under her wing like she seems very focused on like becoming her roommate is like the sign of like ultimate royalty or not royalty loyalty uh and royalty because she and i think that she kind of like kind of notices because corinne kind of has like a similar arc in in 
uh, the bachelor. So it's kind of like, I get you. You like, we're the same kind of person. Um, and I, I just like, think it's kind of interesting. Like she, that's, she's chosen this person that she's going to sort of protect. Um, and it's all based on like, they share a room. It's just, I like an interesting. You know. I have some thoughts about that, but we could save okay. it for later on. When we okay. Get there. When we get to Corinne. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's then uh, talk about the third person to show up, a guy who is all over the place uh, these days, hotter than ever. It's Johnny Bananas uh, is here, and uh, he's currently on the Challenge USA. He's going to be on the Traders. Johnny Bananas. I thought Johnny Bananas was getting sort of like a main character edit. I mean, he's a seasoned, like, he's a seasoned reality TV vet at this point. Like he's, he's, I would say of this cast, like the one person who is like the most booked and busy when it comes to television. So it does not shock me that they're going to him for a lot of sound bites and confessionals because this is what he does. Um, and he has always leaned into this type of character. So I think that it's very easy to go for him. But I also think that like he's a star pick for the cast too. Like they are purposely going to give him that main character kind of energy. But it makes it easy because he's already so seasoned in this. I think that Johnny Bananas is a great pick. I don't think he's the best pick from the challenge. I think he's very good at, at TV, like Jenny said. If you go to him for a confessional, he knows to be on. He knows mm -hmm. who, what character he's given. But I don't think the show yeah. does. I think the show is trying to put him in like a, a douchey white guy who is pulling the strings behind the scenes, you know, kind of making moves, but not maybe at the front of the pack for whatever this is. Um, and I'm thinking that's more like a like a Wes. If you wanted a Wes I'm a Wes guy. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's more of Wes's role in general. I don't think that's normally Johnny Bananas role from my experience with the challenge now here it does feel like that's what they're going to give him and so i'm thinking that you know it'd be interesting to see how johnny banana plays from that role because he's very much a person who plays from the front a lot of times okay um, but they also need someone who might hook up with somebody so yes, enter yes. johnny bananas <laughs> into the the big banana as they call them yeah the, okay so uh <laughs> we'll see if there's going to be a showmance coming in the house of villains house uh then uh, this is somebody who also had a lot of airtime uh, from Bachelor Nation, Jenny. Uh, let's talk about Corinne. Corinne with the platinum vision. <laughs> is, is that what they say? That's what she said once. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that so is what? <laughs> platinum. Uh, she says that. She says is that, that when like a record gets like hit so much that they <laughs> give you like uh <laughs> put on the wall? Is that I don't think that that's what she meant the by budget. that, but it is possible. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I have a platinum uh, over here, right here on the uh -huh. wall. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you can't and, see it's out of frame. Um, yeah, so she, and I mean, I have not thought about Corinne in <laughs> a long. I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't what know her. Done. Okay, so what? Yeah, what? Can you give me her backstory? So she, she, I don't. And I dropped off of Bachelor like shortly after the season she was on. Like I didn't go too much further, but I did watch the season she was on. She was on Nick. Nick Vile season and she that we saw the clip of them making out she was the first person to like go at him kiss him and she was very much just one of those people that was like this is like I'm here I'm going to win I'm getting this guy I'm going to kiss him I'm going to like you know interrupt conversations and I don't and I think I'm great and you guys all suck and she made a lot of enemies uh, and she is good television uh she, I, I I thought in like this first episode, um, she like she definitely doesn't know who she's like stepping up against. But I thought that like her place in this is very fun, um, and clearly she's okay with the idea of a showmance because mm -hmm. we're getting tension between her and bananas immediately, immediately, like. Like she's ready to show the platinum vision. Like, from the, yeah. the, well, maybe there's a bananas looking... love triangle uh, because he um, has multiple love interests on the house yeah. of villains. Yeah, he's yeah. got a whole but bunch a ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he just and somebody get that man a drink because he's thirsty. Get him a white Russian. <laughs> <somewhere>. <laughs> sure, sure. Someone they're trying to get him one. 
<laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, and Corinne is going to be uh, getting into it with Omarosa here in the oh. first episode. Uh, we'll talk about that. Okay. So then after we uh, get uh, Corinne, we get uh, Bobby Lights is here. Okay. And so uh, let's talk about Bobby Lights. So Bobby with his uh magenta hair, I think it is at this point. He said, uh, like I'm coming in like Maleficent. Bobby Lights is from Love and Hip Hop. So somewhere Sasha is screaming right now, <laughs> Love and Hip Hop Miami. Um, and um, you know, uh, he has this show called Bobby I Love You Per, which is like a dating show, very much in the in the same vein as uh like I Love New York or Flavor of Love. And so uh Bobby Lights is coming here and he knows he's like, I'm a villain, he's a very big personality. He says, I say the things that people are thinking, and so I'm very excited to see Bobby Lights in this role because Bobby Lights also is gonna come in here and he's like a contemporary of people like New York who come on and they are the dating show villain, right? And so I'm wondering if he is going to be able to learn at the knee of the queen and really step into villainy amongst some of these goats he is very very fun i like i this is my introduction to to bobby lights but i feel like in this you know this he he was everywhere like very much giving like rat floater vibes of like getting in all of the conversations and making connections with people but also like knowing like what to do to get people on his side um and had some iconic moments already, like not knowing who Joel McHale was, like knowing who he was, but not actually knowing his name. Mm -hmm. uh, he's so he's bringing comedy already. Like I just, yeah, he's he's excellent. Okay, yeah, very fun to have here in the house. We also then got here is um, uh, somebody who I probably would not have had on my draft board, uh, but coming from from the very popular Love is Blind, here is Shake. Jenny, did you watch Love is Blind for the Shake season? No, but I've seen I've seen enough and I, I also get like a ton of Love is Blind TikTok. Um, yeah. So like I'm very aware of like who this man is. Um, it's wild to me that like we're going to... I mean, there's no shortage of, of people. That's what I'm saying. Like, we can keep doing <laughs> as a villain. If we're, if we're picking from Love is Blind, if we're picking from these shows that I didn't realize we're going to be, you know, taken from, like, there's no shortage. Um, yeah. This man has no idea what he's doing, though. None. Like, he fish out of water. Um, I think he's just a D-bag. Like, he's not, yeah. like, a villain. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to say, uh, just, be, just because you're an a-hole, does that make you yeah. a villain? That's what I'm saying. It's like these shows, these shows are not equal. Like their roles in these shows are not all created equal. Um, this is just like a, a terrible man. He's not like scheming and like, ah. Uh. So um, I think he's quickly realizing he's like, oh, I need to figure out what my place is here. He's like, I'm not here to just demean women. That's mm -hmm. not the point <laughs> of the show. He would mm -hmm. win if That's he could do it. He would doing. win. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Shake was, of course, on Love is Blind throughout the season. He was saying awful things about, you know, the women as far as like women who he can't carry on a beach and all this other stuff. Um, carry on his shoulders. On his <laughs> shoulders. Yeah. And all this other stuff. And so, yeah, yeah. Um, very, very much uh, you know, uh, fat phobia and all this other stuff and just being just kind of awful. And yeah. then by the time he hits the reunion, he's in yes. full villain mode and he's like this is my edits bad y'all are awful he's interrupting everybody and all that energy is what got him yeah. cast in this show so yeah i think that you're right i think it was just off of that reunion show i forgot if it was the second or third season of love is Blind. i did watch his season and then he comes back on the reunion show and everybody's like yeah we're all friends and shake is like you should see the group chat. These people are all fake. I'm the only real one on this whole show. Everybody else is totally a phony. I mm. say it like it is, and that's why they don't like me. And they're all like, we don't like you. Shut up. Yeah. Shut yeah. up. You're a jerk. And he's like, yeah, yeah, boo you, boo mm -hmm. you. I, whatever, whatever. I do what I want. You know, like he was really like having like his mm -hmm. moment. But I think that's the Everybody energy. Everybody felt that they bad for the woman that he was going to marry. 
Yeah, shout out to Deep Deep, wherever she is. She mm-hmm. did better. But yeah, yeah. so I think that's what it is. He needed to he needs to encompass that energy all the time. And I think that's just not him. I think he's just, you know, just a jerk. But I don't think he's that guy all the time. And he needs to he needs to harness that if he's gonna do well in this game or at least be good TV. Yeah. Okay. Uh yeah. he's here in the house. He's not ready yet. Okay. All right, <laughs> not ready. All right. Uh let's talk about Tanisha. Queen, mother. Yeah. <laughs> Literally a mom. <laughs> literally a mother. <laughs> literally yeah. mother. <laughs> Rob, Here's... have you? Have, yep. Are you familiar with Tanisha and her uh, her banging pots and pans? <laughs> no, I'm really not. I yeah. see that in this image. There is a big like uh, sauce pot. Yeah, she, Tanisha. She came from Josh, right? Like, so she she originated <laughs> the pots and pans. Yeah, tell bananas. I, I like seeing her here as well as a villain because uh like she also kind of knows, right? Like she she's I think she watches the shows. Like, you know, she goes home and she's familiar with the other people. And so I'm noticing her kind of picking out some of the other villains and being like, oh, you're Shake. You know, like she kind of I think she recognizes Shake. She obviously recognizes New York. So I'm really interested to see how Tanisha does because Bad Girls Club was pretty much it was kind of like this. You know, they just put a bunch of bad girls in one place. And Tanisha was the standout. And you have to be the standout on a show called Bad Girls Club to where you end up eventually, I think, hosting like the Bad Girls Club games. <laughs> Tanisha is just that much of a badass. And so I'm very happy to see her here. Okay. I feel like she's already kind of like falling into a role where she's like kind of like co-piloting like other people that are like because she I don't know and she talks about like being a new mom and stuff and so it's almost like she's like kind of like subduing herself a little bit to Mm -hmm. start and like letting other people be messy first and kind of just being like in their ear which like again we don't fully understand how this show is gonna go um so that might be like actually a good role for her. Okay. Let everyone else be going at each other. All right. We have uh, Jax Taylor from uh, Vanderpump Rules. How many problematic men are there from Vanderpump Rules? I mean, That's Jenny, by, uh, by <laughs> our count, this is the third different Vanderpump guy that we've had on our hit or quit screens. I know. Uh, we had the first uh, Tom uh, went to Mars. Then Scandaval was on <laughs> the world's toughest test. Yeah. And I didn't even know there was another guy. Yeah. Jack this Taylor? was like more me. Like, th- like this, he's kind of like, you know, not, he's not as much of a douchebag anymore. He's not like a big, could be because Tom Sandoval came around and he said, like, I listen, I'm past the baton. It's they're Vander pumping out douchebags. Like that's what this show does. Okay. Um, and this guy also starting off as a big flop, I would say, mm-hmm. uh, he's like, I I'm strong and I push things and I'm not that person. I was anymore. I said, sir, yeah. you Go to don't get to come on a show called house of villains and try to like say, it's not who I am anymore. Well then don't come on this show. I want to see you cussing people out. And I, I, I mean, I should not root for this man to cheat on his wife. He already, but he's already done it. He's already it's done it. But it's a signature move. Yeah. <laughs> that is like apparently how he is a villain. Yeah, once I just you broke want the seal. him. I just, okay, let's listen, just then find another way to be a villain. If that's not what you're going to do. I don't want to watch you push, run into women because in because you're playing giant soccer or whatever like i don't care about being strong man um say some d-bag stuff i'm sure you have it in you uh it looks like he's going to get into it with someone at some point based on the the previews but i just felt like he he was also a fish out of water and just being like what do i do i don't know how you nominate and vote people out i've never done a show like this okay um, i will say that yeah. Alyssa in the chat says even though scandaval is a thing Jax is the real main character villain of the show all right you love to yeah, hear it OG. listen yeah. listen Jax. Oh, I didn't heard about you, Jax. I didn't re- look allegedly. Y'all know the y'all know the Jack story, right? Because he tries to play it off like, "No, I'm here because I cheated on my ex, <laughs> and I've cheated on all my girlfriends, and I'm just I'm just such a big old slut. That's why they put me on this show. But I'm changed. No, I got Jax, married. <laughs> right, I'm married. Like, look, yeah. Jax cheated on his ex 
it like oh, allegedly allegedly this is what i heard on the internet y'all I, I don't know this for a fact so don't sue me jacks but allegedly him and his ex were messing around at like a, a assistant care facility or something or a nursing home in front of like one of the elderly people who were who could not like they couldn't like speak up and say anything about it why yeah. is this some sort that... of weird king look hold on baby i don't know listen i don't know <laughs> But that's what, what is why? Saying. What is the reason? They were taking care of the woman, and then they, you know, one thing led to another. One thing led to another. Then that poor lady had to lay over there and watch that. Is mm. he? Does he work in this field? I thought that this is not what. This is I not what they do. Been, I think it might have been the wife again. Allegedly, oh, allegedly, 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 allegedly. You know. So there you go. Just throwing it out there. This man is a supervillain. <laughs> anyway, okay. he seems like right. a BSer. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, we'll uh, do some Google searches uh, for that <laughs> later on. Okay, to get that uh, story, story Google. straight. Yeah, yeah, I I do know how to Google. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Jack. <laughs> knee deep in the cream. Of wheat please, in this Google. please. Yes. Okay. All right. Then uh, we have uh, from the world of Ninety Day Fiance, somebody who I am not familiar with. Okay. Here is uh, Anfisa Queen. Queen, yes, yes. Chappelle about everything. One queen. All right. Now, Chappelle, <laughs> she's not a recent ninety day fiance person, correct? No, no. Yeah, she's and old school. From, from back in the gap, yeah. So what's but she let been me... doing since then? Chilling, probably trying to make money. <laughs> Look, Amphisa <laughs> is the one person on this cast who I'd say might not even be a villain. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. People are like, she's a gold digger, X, Y, Z. But Rob, when I tell you, you would love Amphisa if you could okay. go back and watch ninety day. Because Anfisa comes on the show with a guy named George, and George is like, oh, women in America are feminist. I cannot deal with women who want to have their own jobs and all this other stuff. Like, I need a woman who's just going to be a wife, and that's it. And he finds Anfisa online looking like a baddie, but she's Russian. And he's like, goes over there, they meet, they hit it off. And he's like, I'm bringing you home, basically, to be my, quote-unquote, male, male order bride, essentially. Yeah, and she's like, wrong? yeah, and she's like, Okay, well, you know, what I'm looking for is someone to take care of me. And I I like expensive things and I need money and uh to, for those expensive things. So when I get there, I'm gonna be taken care of, right? And he's like, Of course, what are you talking about? Listen, when she get first of all, before she even gets there, this is episode one, before she even gets there, um, she he he thinks she's asking for like a forty five hundred dollar purse or something like that, right? Boom, she doesn't get the purse. She we have never seen her on camera yet. She doesn't get the purse. So she goes online and cuts his cell phone off. So he can't even contact anybody. Like, he's just like, my phone is cut off. I gave her the password to XYZ. Now she deactivated it. She's mad. She's like, I'm questioning if she's a gold digger. What, she, what if I don't bring her? Like, I shouldn't bring her here. No, nope, turns out it's some elaborate ass joke that she came up with. She thought would be funny so she could surprise him at the airport. So he's like, babe, I'm, I'm happy you came. I bought this brand new sports car. Because it's fancy and expensive, and you would like that, right? Do you like my car? And she goes, no. <laughs> That's their first interaction in America. She, nope, I don't like the car. And he's like, oh, well, I guess we'll just take the car to, to, the, ho to the hotel. She's like, hotel? I need a, a home to live in. And he's like, oh, well, I can't really get a home today. Oh, well, what did I, why am I here? And then he can't even fit all her luggage in the little sports car. So he has to get a taxi. That woman's face is stone faced for 45 minutes of the episode. She does not flinch. She don't smile. She's like, I got here and was lied to. I was led astray. And so throughout the entire season, she's just like, you told me there would be money. Where, when she asked for her wedding dress, they said, she comes in and she says, what's the most expensive dress you have? That's her, literally how she asked for like what she was going to wear to this wedding. The woman says like, oh, it's like $50,000. She says, okay, can we, can we get that? He's like, no. She's like, but what the hell am I doing here? And Fisa was lied to and led astray, y'all. She's just not a villain. She just needs her things. She mm -hmm. promised Chappelle things. Chappelle is she saying, them. hashtag justice for Anfisa. <laughs> justice for Anfisa. She was lied to. That man told her he had money. Turns out, he was a drug dealer and not the legal kind at first. She uh -oh. was pissed. Yeah. I'm just saying, bro. Like, Afisa's getting a bad rap here. Okay. She Are you happy to see her here in the in the house, Chappelle? Of course. Okay. I like her. Jenny's about to, yeah, you was bringing up the quiet edit or whatever. But yeah, yeah, I like her because they're letting her, they're letting her cook. Let her do her thing. Afisa's not here to backstab y'all. She's here to make Johnny Bananas look like a fool. So <laughs> that's what she's here to do. They put her on the show and said, 
Johnny Banana's been winning these shows. He probably got a little money. And she said, oh, okay, let's see about that. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's he's going to start ready. interviewing all, all the men and be like, how much money did you make from this show? <laughs> right. So what you got here? And she knows yeah. it. And she knows yeah. it. She's never like, what? Me? Gold digger? Why? No, she's like, yeah, I'm not a gold digger. I like nice things and they cost money. So where's the money? Points are okay. made. All right. And then we have one more person who is going to show up. And this is, uh, you know, our other person here with real main character energy doing what she does. Uh, here is Omarosa. You can't have this show without Omarosa. It's she could be the host of the show <laughs> in another universe. Yeah. Maybe two. she'll host the second season. That we're mm -hmm. clamoring for already <laughs> she would be great at it i mean she's so good at what she does like when when she's on like when she wants to bring it she brings gravitas to the show i mean she is like giving like lessons where you are learning about reality tv from omarosa she's done so many shows she's done so many things when she gets into it with corinne she's mm. just like saying things like plain as day like hey don't you know the first to cry is the first to fry that's like <laughs> reality tv 101 is it rob you were there is that it is that <laughs> i didn't key? know that <laughs> she's there to school them all she she the 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 energy, I'm not there, obviously, but I just can tell that the energy changes when she is in the room. Like, she just brings this different intensity in everything. And it's just like, you pay attention and you like, and, and this is where Corinne goes wrong, like, immediately. Like, you respect you you respect this woman or she will destroy you. Like, she will she will destroy you. Yeah. Um, but is is essential casting really mm. if this is like the show that you're going to do um and listen i'm maybe reading too much into the the edit of like what's to come but like i think she's here for the long haul she was like in every clip they showed mm -hmm. uh yeah. for what the season's going to look like um and quite a bit that i think like they show a bunch of like clips of the three people together which is like clearly the luxury win thing that they do mm -hmm. so i'm like she's like in a bunch of groups of three so i'm like is she just winning like all she does is win um so no matter what get ready for this to be omarosa season because i think that that's what what is going to happen here yeah Chappelle, i, I saw you had tweeted something about omarosa today i did i've been oh, watching this woman this. on tv since i was 15 years old <laughs> and um we have both aged and um, age is treating Omarosa very good. I mean, dear God, th this woman. I said, Omarosa, and you, girl, what? When you start, when she she always looked like that, y'all. She ain't never been. I she had, she had the friend, dress girl. on at the spa. You see that? All right, look, I ain't, hit a, I ain't hit a sexually harass this woman. I don't want to be say nothing inappropriate. <laughs> just Omarosa, we see you, girl. That's all I got to say. Wow. Right? You, I mean, you're like walking it to you. What, I'm like, what a power talk about couple. the boobs. Bro, don't you hate a sexy Republican? Ain't they, 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 nothing worse. <laughs> <laughs> nothing worse. Than I believe Republican. Omarosa will tell you she's an independent. I, I would love that. Well, she say is that. independent. She can yeah. say that to me. She can tell me whatever she wants. If she had cussed me out like she was talking crazy to Corinne, I'd have been like, yes, ma'am. Thank she you. does have an interesting backstory. She did work in the Trump White House, but I think she also worked uh, for Bill Clinton at one point. Uh, so uh, that she's had a very interesting career, even beyond the reality TV of it all. She said, well, Google me. And I did. Yeah. <laughs> and I already yeah. knew who and she was. And I believe she bananas? did not part the Trump White House on good terms either. No. Yeah. She's not like in in with him at the state. No. I was like, well, I don't no. know. Are they texting? Are they texting? Uh, well, Bananas calls her like she's opportunistic. And so mm -hmm. I think that that's like, you know, you can see that in, okay, well, she worked, she worked for Trump administration. She also worked for like Clinton administration. So it's like, she's maybe just taking what the opportunity is that she sees fitting to whatever her mission is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know how that works, but I I, I could not relate as the most beta woman to exist. Okay, I cannot fathom. Uh, but she knows what she's doing. <laughs> she could, yeah, yeah. Goddamn. <laughs>
<laughs> We've lost Chappelle. Mm -hmm. I just, he has, I, I, he has I've a skill her from the episode life. open. <laughs> I've known her my whole life, and she just ain't never did the things that she was doing this time. I said, God damn, girl. She wasn't um, wearing those dresses in the other bruh, shows you watched, I think, I baby like, Chappelle. Celebrity <laughs> Big Brother didn't get down like this. Not at all. She <laughs> needs to, well, we should have put on the block a little bit more. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Maybe your change. Maybe not her. Yeah. I'm definitely not 15 no more. I'm mm -hmm. grown, Amarosa. <laughs> <laughs> I did not know that we were going to end up thirst posting through podcast uh, live. I, this is perfect. I love this. Mm -hmm. Look at the red dress. She's serving. Yeah. <laughs> House of baddies. Don't you hate a hot <laughs> Republican, says Chappelle. Oh, my God. Uh <sighs> Let's talk about what went on here in the first episode, all right? That's the cast. Uh, they come in, and really the big drama that we get instantly is, for whatever reason, Omarosa, you know, there's some people she's very excited to see. She's happy to see she has a relationship with Corinne. She will not give her the time of day. And uh, Corinne apparently does not know who Omarosa is, and Omarosa advises her to check out Google. Now, he Yes. Do, do we think, okay, because what happened was when Omarosa entered the house, everyone was upstairs. Like, I think they were all like checking out the rooms or whatever. And they see her come in and everyone's like, oh my God, like they're terrified of her. Um, rightfully so. And so I can't imagine that even if Corinne didn't know who she was before that moment, that she didn't like figure it out through them all talking about who was entering the door. What I thought might have happened here is Corinne is just one of those people that like, even when you know someone's name, when you meet them for the first time, you say, hi, I'm Jenny. Like, and mm -hmm. like, what's your name or whatever? Like, I don't know. It's meeting people is weird. That's um, not how you greet a villain. But I, clearly not. And I also just think that like the, the fatal mistake of, Letting this woman, letting Omarosa think that you don't know who she is, like th game over. You, I, I don't know, Jenny. I don't. I think you think she just sincerely didn't know. I think she sincerely didn't know, and I think Omarosa yeah. was just making a power play. I think that Omarosa yeah. knows that she. Hey, how old is Corinne? Uh, I don't know. She's probably like thirty-two. I want to say like. Right. She was probably uh, like early mid twenties. She's, 20s when she's she... 31. thirty one. Thirty one. Okay. okay. Oh, she was there. So, so she should know. She should I don't know. know. I mean, so the saying. first season of The Apprentice is what two thousand four. So she was. Yeah, I mean, Chappelle, you were fifteen. She was twelve. <laughs> maybe, maybe twelve year old girls aren't watching The Apprentice. I mean, but The Apprentice isn't the last time we see Amarosa either. You know, she's yeah. on television throughout. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, I think that's, I think, look, but look, maybe Corinne's not tapped in. There's a lot of people who weren't just mm -hmm. in the like reality TV world. Like, I mean, I was knee deep in the reality TV world. So I knew all these people, yeah. but, um, but yeah. Corinne might not have been, but I, y'all, I think this is a ploy. I think that Amarosa comes in. She knows what makes good TV. One is a fight. Of and course. two, she knows mm -hmm. that she needs to pick on somebody because that's what Amarosa is known for. She is, she is a presence. And so she says, okay. If this person can stand up to me, fine. But if not, we about to have good TV while we try while we try to figure it out. Yeah. Because Shake also was like, "Hi, what's your name?" And she was like, "Amarosa" with an O because he didn't even understand how to pronounce it at first. Yeah. And it was kind of cold. But she didn't do Shake how she did her. Yeah, because no. Omarosa is gonna come in and she knows that she's gonna got she's gonna walk into the cafeteria and she's gonna take some freshman's lunch and dump it in the garbage. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Uh, Cor <laughs> Corinne was that person. Exactly. And Corinne is like waiting on her to be like uh acknowledge acknowledge me i'm trying to speak to you and amorosa looks at shake and says i want to talk to you about business girl you've been in the house three seconds three <laughs> seconds ain't no business to talk about stop ignoring this girl you just be a disrespectful on purpose because corinne you don't think corinne can take it corinne yeah. goes upstairs and cries and amorosa's like look at her weaponizing her tears like a white woman i'm like see see amorosa you know what you're doing that girl ain't said two words to you except hi well, she mm -hmm. did call her a bitch eventually, but I mean, you know, that's the thing is, Cor like Corinne, like she, yes, she didn't go cry after, but like Corinne also was like, that's what I tried trying to <laughs> effing hard. Have a good day, bitch. Like, yeah. she's, like she's not stepping <laughs> back. Not going down. She, yeah. she did yeah. say, she did call Omarosa a bitch, but, and then ran upstairs and cried, but she still yeah. did it. So yeah. 
it's something. Tears, tears do not exempt you from being a villain. A lot of times they help. And I think that it is a tool. And so, like I said, I want these two people on my screen as long as possible because I'm also said, I'm going to fight with you and you're going to like it or you're going to get out. And Corinne's like, okay, well, let's fight then. And we're about to see what happens. Yeah. All right. We got Joe McHale finally to come in and he is the perfect host for this show. This is Joel McHale uh, doing Joel McHale things. Uh, that's uh, just so fun. I'm so happy to see him here as the host of the show. I'm so glad that he was up for doing this, uh, that they're doing Jenny, all sorts of fun stuff with like breaking the fourth wall. And then you got to see, like, I think that this is a show that is also going to show you that these are seasoned reality TV people and they are all nightmares to work with. Uh, that They are difficult. And the show, I think, is going to pull back and say, like, this is what it was like to make this show. And that is makes it so much more interesting uh, as a concept. Like, they're like, ready. I they're love... walking up. This, it's two calls. Like, we're, we're yeah. not doing this. Like, get you 39 takes. takes. And then they just then just do it all over again at night. Like, I love that they keep that stuff in. I love like the little offhand comments um, from Joel. It's a love like, letter in, to us. Yes. Mm -hmm. it And it, it's so it's so perfect. He's the perfect person for it because he's so like cutting and like dry. But like takes away the seriousness of like, I don't know. It's just this show is so good because it is not serious but it's so well produced but they're showing the parts of it that like go into how it is so well produced um we're showing like the, why these people are divas and like villains and all of that it's just incredible uh he's like asking for a cigar while he's waiting to be able to do his take like the, his next take there's like jets flying over ruining it like you're not getting we get a little bit of like the producer like you know, talking to someone during like a confessional in other shows. But like when we're getting like the host, we're showing like the whole, uh, a whole segment attempted to be filmed and then reshot and you're, you're keeping all of that in. Like mm -hmm. it's just different. And I hope that they leave enough room to like include those little nuggets in other episodes and that this wasn't just like a premiere type thing because I think that there's probably lots oh. of like really funny things that happen along the way. Yeah, that I think this include. is what the show is. The show is telling us so. like what, what it's going to be like. And, and this was yeah. really one of my favorite things about it. Yeah. We saw Johnny Fairplay redoing his entrance. We saw uh, Johnny Bananas getting out of the car with his fly down. You know, <laughs> we see that they take forever to get these takes done so they can uh, so they can greet them with Joel McHale. They don't know his name, all this other stuff. They've done no research as to what's going on here. Bobby Lights is like Carson Daly. And <laughs> it takes so long that when they actually get the shot, it's nighttime. And so they're like, they had to go and take a recess because I'm Rosa then walked off or something like that. <laughs> So, yeah, she wasn't waiting. Could, yeah, so I couldn't tell if it was just movie magic and they got them all in on it or if this is really what it's like. But I feel like if nothing else, it is showing us that in a typical reality TV superstar diva, you know, concept, uh, you get a lot of these. The people who are villains, they gonna act like it. Yeah, and I think that's what having Joel McHale as the host also brings to it, where that it's like coming from his background with the soup. You know, we have these people here. They're playing hard. They're going to do villain things, but it also is a show that is going to allow us to sort of like pull back and say, this is complete and utter ridiculousness that yes. these people are here doing ridiculous things. And he can like, he can hang with them. You know what I mean? Like he can roast them and he's not like, I don't know. He, he comes with a confidence that like, I feel like a not many other hosts could do this particular yeah. show because of how he's able to like banter with them. And he does not care if they don't like him. Like <laughs> he's, like, he's fine. My he life has is a fine. career. Yeah. You know, if somebody on this show is annoyed with him, then, you know, cool. he's not, he's not going to take the bait. He's so. not here to make friends, Rob. Okay. He's here to yeah. make money. And this I love the meta the best friends. This is how yeah. the villains. Yes, a villain. Exactly. I love the meta um, discussion of the show as well, where he's like, okay, like welcome to house of villains. Like, so the concept of if one villain is great for ratings, then 10 will either get us an Emmy or canceled. Like, I love that we're talking about how this show will do because of how, 
how they thought of the concept being like, hey, let's take a bunch of people that were really good for TV and put them all together and see how much of a mess we can make. It might mm -hmm. be great. It, we we might never see this ever again. And I love the like showing that conversation again. Really funny. OK, very meta. Let's talk through the rules of House of Villains as we understand them. OK, so each week there's going to be a battle royal challenge where all of the competitors who are in the game and we still don't know if people are going home or if it will be all 10 people uh, throughout. They will all be competing for one prize. The winner of the Battle Royal Challenge gets to go on a reward where they get to bring two people, a luxury reward. We saw that they went to a spa in this episode. The winner of the challenge will then make a hit list where three people are going to be up on the block for elimination, we presume, one of those people will not survive that elimination and the other two will come back into the house. So that's the setup here. It is, I think, set up in a way so that you will have, you know, you have to put three people on the block. Two will come down and be annoyed that one person named them to go up on the block. So it will, I think, create a situation where we will have lots of people pissed off at each other. Which yep. is perfect. Mm -hmm. It's like you taking mean? like a big brother con because it is like probably closest big to brother. big brother, right? Yeah. So so like essentially the person that that wins the battle royale is is the head of household and they're putting up three nominees with one guaranteed to win the veto. Like that's essentially what's happening mm -hmm. here. And it does sound like there is a vote for the two that end up being the final people on the hit list, the rest of the house. And I don't know if the person who won the battle Royale votes, like we don't know if I, that part is still unclear to us because we didn't get anyone eliminated yet. Um, but it, there, there's like talk of, uh, you know, elimination and banishment. And it's like, we don't even know what that looks like yet, yeah. but the concept itself, the, fu the game function sounds very big brother. Well, do you think that there will be another competition after this group of three is named? So um, well, I, I guess, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. how well, they get one person down, right? So we get, uh -huh. oh, so there will be another competition. So do we think yes. that each episode, like it will actually take two weeks of episodes to do one elimination cycle? Is that why we're going to sort of like just oh. stretch out the eliminations? Maybe. Uh, that, it would make sense for them to do that from a... I mean, it's only a 10-person cast, so I don't know how many episodes right, yeah. there are going to be. So if you were going to sort of say, like, get down to a finale with five people, uh, maybe you do, like, two weeks per uh, elimination cycle. Yeah, I think so I saw that it, it goes to December 14th, so however many episodes mm -hmm. that gives us, I'm not sure. It's like two Yeah, and it, it's like you have these villains, you don't really want to leave them after one episode, right? You kind of like, I get, mm -hmm. I get like, if, for me, for television purposes, I would like to, to have an elimination at the end of every episode, so I know what I'm going into, right? Maybe you do like one or two cliffhangers, but for the most part, give me like a Survivor season, right? Where at the end of every episode, boom, we know somebody's getting eliminated. But you got these villains. And I, I could see a world where if you don't want to get rid of them so quickly, you do drag all these eliminations out to where they span over two episodes. Because imagine how we finish this episode and somebody like, you know, Corinne goes home. That, that we miss a whole other day of content from her, you know? And mm -hmm. so we need, we need to stretch that out, I believe. And so I'm okay yeah. with it. But yeah, it's Big Brother-esque. Okay. And maybe it won't be like one size fits all, like the first couple of episodes, they'll kind of drag it out while they have more people creating more content. And so mm -hmm. they can do like the first couple of eliminations over like spanning over more than one episode. And then maybe as they get down to fewer people, it'll speed up a little bit again. Yeah. We don't. Yeah. It, I love money. You know, we've seen this kind of thing before. Okay, so we got the first competition where we are going to have uh, the giant infl inflatable balls, the balls out challenge, uh, where people needed to like push the giant balls out of the soccer field. Uh, was this a fun challenge? This is like straight out of Fall Guys. I feel mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like I wow. feel like they stole. Right. Like I'm pretty sure that it this was like giving Mario challenge. Party. Yeah, yeah, it's very much like one of those. Yes. Um, what a weird like. Are they all going to be physical? That's the other question. We don't know. Like, there's even they even talk about it. They're like, 
are we going to get some more puzzles or something like that? Um, it was really funny to have these, again, every show I, I cover has giant balls. Um, it's a thing. There's always mm -hmm. giant balls. Uh, and so these big spheres with their faces on it was really funny. It, it was like trying to take a video game and like make it real life. Um, but it, it seemed like people were definitely trying to throw like, you know, you've got giant bananas coming in here. Who's like, Hey, you don't want to make yourself too much of a target right off the jump. Uh, you don't want to win first. And then you've got like yeah. dumb jock guys, like, like Jax and shake being like, I am a man and I want to win the yeah. challenge. Well, Jenny, that was my favorite part about the show was like all of the little like reality TV lessons that you learn from these uh, all time greats where Johnny Banana says, yeah, you never win the first challenge. That's, mm -hmm. uh, that's the biggest mistake you can make. Yeah. It's it, and and here we are with uh you see you like you said shake and and Jax being like no I gotta win I gotta win I gotta I gotta play hard I definitely need to put a target on my back right now and so yeah but this challenge I think was less about physicality and definitely more social right because it's not like if in a Big Brother or Survivor version of this if your ball gets out of the game you probably are out of the game too but these people got to stick around and basically yes. choose who they wanted to win the game because they all could have just jumped one person and made sure they got out and we saw that a couple times um and so yeah this was more of a who are you good with being the head of household or the super villain of the week uh and it did come down to johnny bananas who probably has a little bit more physicality keeping people from attacking him and taking his ball and amarosa who did not really move uh um, no. and she just made sure that like don't come over here or i'm gonna be amarosa to you and you're not gonna like that and so mm -hmm. ultimately johnny bananas and amarosa make a deal for her to take the first uh super villain of the week and for him to you know be safe for the week allegedly Mm -hmm, and he allegedly. didn't want this i think that like he like he was in a situation where he was like oh my god i said i wasn't going to win first and i almost feel like i have to because i am very worried about giving this to omarosa um which he was almost worried about but uh yeah it it was an interesting challenge and i just don't think that everyone was on the same page about how to like how they wanted to handle it um but like do you think that people talked and were like Let's 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 give it to Om Rosa. Like I feel like because I don't think that Corinne would have been on board for that. And also, it does seem like she has people working with her. So it's just kind of interesting how we got down to that. Like I feel like I would have loved some post challenge confessionals uh, <laughs> explaining about how things went. Besides, like I just thought I would push a ball. Yeah. I, I think this is like a little bit more of like a challenge situation in that I think this is just like a like non-aggression pact between the heavy hitters. And I think that it's like, okay, let's just like go after fresh meat. I think that mm -hmm. that's the people that like, we don't really know these people. Uh, the rest of us who have been around the block, like let's just like, you know, stand back and go after the newbies. See, and I was looking at it more like Amorosa and Johnny Fairplay go way back. They've been knowing each other for a long time. They're they, besties, look, apparently. They, if they I mean, they know each other 20 years. Right. Like so, I, I, I've been, you know, places where uh, they're they're both at. And, you know, oh. they said, like, hey, we started this. Yeah. Thanks. They like, look at this. Everything we yeah, they got here, we made this. We made this possible. That's them. <laughs> and so they, they're, at the very least, are going to be in cahoots in this first one. And so if Johnny Fairplay is whispering to, like, let Omarosa have it. And then, you know, or or other people yeah. are like, I'm not going to go after Omarosa. Are you? And then I'm like, no, nah, I think she's good. You know, I think that's more what's keeping them off of them. Because I would suspect that maybe she has a non-aggression pack with like a Johnny Fairplay. But I don't know how many other people are in on that one. So I would love to see how that plays out. Mm -hmm. Well, we even see the two of them talk at one point and they're like, do people not realize like how close we are? Like, like they're they're basically acknowledging like people are not on to the fact that like, we're homies like and so this is clearly a thing that is going to continue beyond the first episode we just haven't really seen a lot of it from johnny's standpoint yet i i guess but mm -hmm. yeah like they're clearly they're in cahoots okay well omarosa is going to be the first uh winner of the challenge she gets to bring two people with her on the reward and i think that johnny bananas thought that he was going to be part of this uh instead uh she's going to end up taking uh tanisha and bobby to the spa 
And I loved her explanation of like the strategy behind this, um, where she basically says that like these are two people that have big mouths and are like in, you know, are talking to everyone and I want to take their information and use it for what I'm going to do here. So, you know, she's like, I have a way to spin it as like a personal reason to bring these two people, but here is my strategic reason. Like just again, reality TV, like competition TV 101, where it's like, how can you pick people that are going to benefit you, but it also like looks good to the rest of the group? Yeah. And Tanisha and Bobby Lights are from newer age, you know, uh, kind of reality TV. Like Tanisha is more seasoned, but Bobby Lights brand new to the scene. And so if she can get people from every era to be running her information back, because she's got the Johnny Fairplay Omarosa timeline. She's got that down. But to get Tanisha, who's kind of like in the middle and even like a Bobby who's very at the end of that uh, like spectrum of, you know, reality TV history. I think that covers all her bases. And so it was a, it was a savvy play from Omarosa. But that's Omarosa. That's what you're going to get. Mm hmm. Okay, uh, they're going to go off to the spa. Anything of note from the spa trip? I think Chappelle noted it already. Yeah, Christ. <laughs> God. It hey, was Omarosa Christ. in that dress. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, yep, that's it, Rob. That's all. Okay. All right. They talk. They talk. So, and, oh, well, they talk and they specifically. No, this was a good line, actually. So Omarosa says, so who do you think I would put up? And Bobby Lights goes, Corinne, she says, well, why would you feel that way? He said, because you literally said it. She's like, oh, yeah, I did say that, huh? It's like, yeah, Amarosa, you're not doing a good job of uh, picking on Corinne, if, like, subtly. And there's no there's no subtlety to this. We all see it. Um, and then they kind of just talk about, like, other options as well. Shake's name comes up. Um, you know, they kind of talk about Jax a little bit. So they kind of do the thing where they're planting seeds of who this could be potentially who goes home. And they even mention Johnny Bananas, who had just made that deal okay yeah she's like she's like um she's like well there's there's bananas and they're like yeah you gave your word to him and she's like oh you're right i did give my word to him uh she's like well i wouldn't mind putting him up if you <laughs> right. guys have my Still. back right she's like, oh, <laughs> like, i would do it if you guys think it's a good idea right i gave my word but i'm a villain right yeah <laughs> yeah you know what no, you're you on <laughs> yeah all right so we go back to the house and it's time to go to the secret layer this was pretty cool the setup for where we're gonna put do our nominations do our official show business yes please rob before we do that i do want to talk about something in the house too you ready sure. so i have a theory because omarosa comes in and she basically just plants her flag like i don't like this korean girl and new york is like that's my roommate don't do that i like her but when omarosa goes to new york she's like listen Tiffany, babe, it's me, it's you, you're iconic, I'm iconic. Obviously, they can't they can't hold a candle to us. And this Korean girl, she sucks. She's not one of us. She she's crash, fry, all that stuff. And she's kind of like, you get it, right? Like, I'm supposed to be targeting her. And New York's listening. She's like, okay. But then we see her like, no, nah, I think I think I should be fighting with Omarosa. I, I think I should be protecting Corinne for no apparent reason. And so there's a moment where she's talking to Corinne and she says, no. If you leave, I'm leaving because I'm not going to let you leave this game. I'm not letting you get voted out. I think Tiffany New York Pollard has identified that while, while Omarosa thinks she should be bullying Corinne, New York's supposed to be fighting with Omarosa. And Omarosa came to her like, we're equals, babe. Don't do this. Don't come for me. We, we got each other. And you're like, that's not good TV. That's not why you call New York here. I'm the HBIC. I'm ready for the New yeah. York and Amorosa fight. It's coming. Oh my gosh. Because because it's basically like, here is an opportunity for drama. Join me in this drama where we bully Corinne. And then, and New York's just like, no, I think I would much, I'll take this one step further. I am going to start the drama with you. And that is the prime time, like, ticket. Yeah, and she's right. <laughs> and really, going to be good. like these games are just sort of like a dog and pony show because the real show and like uh, there's a there's a cash prize, but the ultimate prize is airtime. And these people for these characters on the show, yeah. like this is their oxygen and they're going to it's a dog eat dog world for who's going to be able to create the most story and get the most attention in this house of villains show. And I think that that's where we're going to see this real craziness come out. Yeah, you, you're right. The real prize here is attention. 
That's why they're villains. If they wanted to win, they wouldn't be villains. They would be good players at everything that they do. New York says, I've never won a game. And she can play at least eight of them. And um, this is a $200,000 prize, which they could all probably use. But you know what you might like a little bit more than that? Another show. Season mm -hmm. two. Exactly. Maybe the host. You Your know? own show. Right. This is wow. And yeah, when when you have been on shows before and now you're like brought on to this show, you are like you have now had the idea validated that like if you are entertaining enough on another show, more opportunities will present themselves. So this is more than trying to win the show, be good television and you will get paid for something else down the road. And, you know, this this is proof of that right here. So. I hope that the game mechanics are as such that it will reward that because let's not bring, uh, you know, best TV making villains into a show and then have all of the ones that are actually yeah. like producing just like fall. No, I have faith in the producers of the show. I think yeah, they know what I they're do doing. Too. I, yeah, yeah. it's so far so good. So we'll see. But yeah. Okay. All right. Then. We got our nominees, okay? Uh, that we got like this, like Doctor Evil type layer uh, that we went down. I like that they called villains layer, and we go into the secret room behind the bookcase, the super villain to, fortress, super villain fortress, to end up getting our three people that are going onto the what is it? The hit list, uh, yeah. and uh, on the hit list, it's going to be Corinne, it's going to be Shake, and Jonathan Bananas. No, 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 not Johnny Bananas. Almost no, no, no. She, oh, Jax. She she gave us the swerp. Like she yes, she did the like wrote his name and crossed it out. Like, except for verbally, it was incredible. She and I I was believing her for a second. She was like, There's someone who's like been, you know, has done these like all of these challenges, they're physical and like they win, they've won so many times. And that person is Johnny bananas. And like, like he's pooping his pants. And then everyone's like, Oh my God, they're so shook. And, um, and then she's like, but there was one person in the challenge who gave him a run for his money. And that's Jack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like it was, it was Fake poetic. Yes. Like, but she also just shows her cards being like, I will destroy you if I want to. Like she put him yeah. on notice, which was incredible, but also like kind of scary. <laughs> Yeah, she put him on notice and everybody else. Because if you weren't thinking about Johnny Bananas as a threat, um, she just outlined why he is, you know. And so uh, maybe if you're not, your head isn't in the game, if you're someone like Shake or Corinne who just got put up on the block, maybe you have other uh, targets at this, after this conversation from Amorosa. We don't know. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we leave it there on a cliffhanger, uh, which, you know, in a perfect world, uh, we get like a little bit more closure. But, you know, that's how these shows end up being. I mean, the traders will do this. So don't expect, you know, your 2023 reality shows to end on an eviction. Mm -mm. This is where we're at now. Um, but we get like the little it's it's almost like the um, the confessionals, like when after you've been put on the block on Big Brother, where it's like, I'm going to fight for that veto, because that's the next thing that's happening is whatever this challenge is between the three of them. Um, so like. Shake has apparently been shaken. He's like, uh, I've been treating he's this. Shook. <laughs> he's shook. He's been treating this like a vacation and he's like fallen behind the pack. No shit. Yeah. Um, and then Jax apparently is like, don't poke the bear. I'll come back. Yeah. You. I don't know. Bear stuff. Um, but Corinne was incredible because she's like, Bachelor Nation is going to be so pissed <laughs> at you. Like they want ratings. You want ratings. Like, don't get rid of me. You, like, if you do this to me, Omarosa, America is going to hate you. Yeah. Effing Has loser. Bachelor Nation put out a statement yet today? Let yeah. me see. Hashtag oh. Bachelor Nation. Look. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Bachelor Nation be having mixed feelings about Korean. They, now, don't get oh, me wrong. I've, sure. I've seen Bachelor Nation, and, and Bachelor actually, Nation's not too wrong. distracted with the Golden Bachelor on Thursday nights. Look, they're in heaven right now because they've yeah. been loving the they Golden Bachelor. But Bachelor in Paradise is the nation that you really need to check out if you want to see Korean's uh, greatest hits. I'll say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where okay. she did her real dirt. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, I I just have so many so many questions about where this is gonna go. Um, 
because like you said, we get the we get the next time on and shows yeah, this basically season the whole on. season. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Carol Baskin. Carol what? Baskin. That's what? not a spoiler, what right? Carol doing? Baskin. What now did they just say it was Carol Baskin? And they, they seemed like they showed her. To, uh, it was, I thought that they that, that I somebody was in it. a mask and they said yeah, there was Carol. Satan. Yeah, that yeah. was Satan. Satan, yes. Spencer Pratt. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, Abby Lee Miller from Dance Abby Lee Moms Miller. Is yeah. To be on the yes. show. Uh, I believe uh, Chef Ben Robinson from Below Deck and Danielle Staub from uh, Real Housewives of New Jersey as well. But mm -hmm. we don't know what that means and why they're there. Which yes, is like, judges. Yes, yeah. hosting mm -hmm. or something. Who knows? Like, why are they on buyback? the show? It's yeah, like, it's like they, they couldn't commit to the whole thing, but they wanted to use them. Like, save them for the next season, then. I don't know. Is Carol Baskin busy? Is she like, nah, mm -hmm. I'm too good for <laughs> Carol Baskin is booked and busy. There's yeah. a lot going on. Yeah. She's doing something. Uh, look, I, give me some of those extras. I, I, Rob, I know you'd be excited to see some of these people, right? Who would be your favorite of the people we just named to come back? To come back and, uh, and be on to the show? To the show, yeah. We, we named, uh, let me go through the list one more time. We named uh, uh, Carol Baskin, yeah. Abby Lee Miller, who I know you love, Spencer Pratt, Ben Robinson. I Daniel would have to Staub. say of that list, Abby Lee Miller. Yes, oh yeah. And then Danielle Staub probably, right? I want to I hear her say prostitution whore. Because mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I think that's her, right? Look, I, I think it's a great format for the show. And, you know, they easily, you know, Johnny Banana said, I think we just got a season two. So I think it's a really, really fun format. Let's, you know, um, see what the ratings are. And I guess I we have to see if there's a, a, you know, a good response to this podcast if we do more episodes or not. Mm, yeah, we need uh, some reviews, y'all, for the Hit It or Quit It feed. I've not got to plug the Hit It or Quit It feed like I would like to, but here we are. Uh, five star ratings, five star ratings. Y'all made y'all made this thing happen. Hit It or Quit It. Y'all built this from the the Joe Billy Gang and avocados and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We need the ratings. <laughs> tell us you need us to hit it or yeah. quit it. And tell look and tell, specifically ask for me to hit it or quit it too. So I can get rid of Rob. I'm just saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. Be busy. I know what you want to hit or quit. Uh, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> Both of those things. Yeah. <laughs> I'm then, so glad Chappelle's here. <laughs> Jenny, anything else about the premiere of the House of Villains that you uh, want to talk about? Um, no, mostly just on what's what's to come because um which is an interesting word because uh, I'm pretty sure we see a clip of New York calling someone a blank guzzling Republican blank. <laughs> hmm. blank and I'm just York. saying Who's like, she talking about? the Shake? best is, <laughs> the best is I don't know I don't know any of these people's politics to be fair mm -hmm. so <laughs> who knows what who who she's talking to but uh, I I think it's going to be good um yeah, I'm very, very excited about this. Yeah, uh, Chappelle, there's going to be showmancing. Yeah. Any other thoughts about the House of Villains? No, this is dope. I mean, like, this, like for me, someone who just has been consuming so much reality TV over the years, <laughs> what do you, what you, what can you ask for better here? We've seen on all the shows, the villains are always the most memorable. You know, the heroes are cool, but the villains last a lifetime, and so this is good. I, I think it's good. I hope everybody says that we should hit it. And then I hope that they hit a season two. Cause that would be nice. Cause I could, I think we could cast a whole other season off of this alone. Oh, so yeah. yeah. Bring me more of this, Rob. Don't be, don't be lame. Let us hit it or quit it. Okay. All right. Uh, it's not up to me. Don't it's be the a audience. Villain, Rob. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> you know, Give Rob a reason. Like, Give Rob the, a reason. like uh, this is uh, the people's podcast and you know, we listen to like <laughs> what the people want and if people mm -hmm. want us to, you know, we have, we have patrons who are really, you know, that we, we do what the patrons want and let's see what they say. Sounds good to me. All right. All right. Uh, also in our hit it or quit it, podcast feed jenny autumn and i just got done talking about buddy games earlier tonight yes. you can hear that as well in our hit it or quit it podcast feed go to rob has website.com slash hit or quit feed not to mention everything else that we have going on including uh chappelle and i every day covering suits over on suits yourself yep go to suitspodcast.com a show and full subscribe. of villains it's a ton of well 
right now we're in season four ish on our on our watch uh and uh there's one villain there's mm-hmm. really one villain right now and i can't wait till y'all get there uh check out suitspodcast.com join our facebook community suitspodcast.com slash facebook and join the conversation about the show it's happening we're having a great time we're almost halfway through but you can catch up the podcast is timeless just like the show suits Okay, Chappelle. Rob is like, (laughs) it's just like dying about Rob being like, I'm not sure about this show uh, because you're so busy podcasting about suits every damn day. Like, and what about it? What do you want to stop, Jenny? (laughs) He cannot stop. Do you know what happens if we stop? I'm not telling you to. I'm just saying. We'll die. It's it's a, if he wanted to, he would, you know? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) More pressure on Rob. Mm-hmm. Okay, Chappelle, what else is coming up for you? Um, yeah. So, uh, clearly, I am talking about suits every day on post show recaps on our Suits Yourself podcast. Uh, check out SuitsPodcast.com again for that. Uh, we are also talking about The Walking Dead on post show recaps, and so we are finishing up The Walking Dead, Daryl Dixon, Fear the Walking Dead. The final season of that is coming soon, and then they have just announced The Walking Dead, Rick and Michonne series as well called the ones who lived and so check that out too jadis is back rob i don't know if you remember jadis but oh back. garbage person yeah. your fave and so check that out on post show recaps also if you want to hear me and mari wrap up our coverage of the changeling you can check us out here on youtube on our po- on the post show recaps ca- uh, page youtube.com slash post show recaps and check out our the changeling playlist or subscribe to the connect on post show recaps wherever you get your podcast so that'd be spotify apple and all those good places too um so I'm over there on Post Show Recaps handling those things, but I'm on Rob Has a Podcast talking about Below Deck with Sasha every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern here live on YouTube and on our Bravo Wrap Ups feed. Uh, And then um, uh, Brian Scally and I are covering The Devil's Plan as well. Uh, We have just recorded and dropped season uh, one, episodes uh, three and four, and we should have episodes five and six coming to you soon, so check that out too. And then, of course, Rob and I every week are talking about Netflix shows on Nothing But Netflix, and this week we will be talking about The Fall of the House Usher with uh, our special guest, Ariel, from Post Show Recap, so check that out and more. And follow me on Twitter at Chappelle's underscore show to keep up with all that. You can follow me on Twitch too. Twitch.tv slash yeah. Chappelle's underscore show where I'll be no, you streaming. You might be too busy to talk about uh, more how to do He no, said he listen. doesn't sleep. <laughs> I don't sleep. And this is why. Because I love talking about TV. It's my sleep. Mm-hmm. It is my food as well and my nourishment. And so, uh, <laughs> yeah. So check that out. Uh, follow me on Twitter and keep up with all the updates. I don't know. You sound pretty busy. Nope. Jenny, what's should, going up for you? We should talk right after this, Rob. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. That's a good idea. Hey, you guys should, actually. You should do that. Um mm-hmm. What's coming up for me is is yet to be seen. Obviously, Rob, we have I feel like we've made like a silent commitment to keep going with buddy games. Like there's, there's not that much left. left. We're gonna yeah. see it through. So, like, like you said already, uh, check that out. And uh other than that, just dabbling in a little bit of big brother here and there, as that is still happening for like another month. Um, and anything else that I'll have going on, I'll talk about it on Twitter at Jenny Autumn and I this was such a tremendous experience. Fun I loved this yeah. show. I love talking to the two of you. Um, I love you both so much. But you love talking you're to ne- me more. You're never right, villains though. to me. <laughs> yeah. But you love talking to me more, right? So we don't again, we don't need Rob to. I never said I needed Rob. All right, all right, cool. All right, cool. Yeah. That's all I need <laughs> right. Nobody has to ever podcast again. Also. <laughs> Rob's, Rob's like, I'll turn this car around. Yeah. yeah. We could how about no more podcasts? Okay. We just agreed to podcast yes. right after this. Stop being like that, Rob. Dang. Let us have All right. stuff. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, everybody, for checking this out. This was a nice uh response on the live audience, too. We appreciate you being here with us. Take care, everybody. Have a good one.